Hey guys, want to do a jar full of stars? You can do this quick, fast, fun, and easy with pens. Let's get started. Hello and welcome to Deliberately Creative. I'm Stephanie and I am here to welcome you to your creativity. I have a fun project today. We're going to be using brush pens and watercolor paper to make this fun jar full of stars. I do have a printable template so you can trace this off onto your watercolor paper and be able to do this right along with me. The link is down below in the more information box. If you are interested in any of the materials, those are all listed down below in the information box. Also, I have a coupon code for Arteza that is good through March 4th, 2020 for 10% off your entire purchase. They are not paying me to do this. They did give me the pens for free for an earlier uh, video that I did. I just have been really enjoying using them and yay, I love to share what makes me happy. So here we go. We're going to be doing this with these fun pens. These pens are the Arteza Real Brush watercolor markers. And I have, let's see, seven colors. And hello, everybody that just came in. I really appreciate you being here. Thank you so much. And if you're new here, go ahead and click that subscribe button so, and the notification bell and make sure notifications are turned on your devices also. Otherwise, YouTube won't tell you that I'm live and I want to do more live shows and share some fun times with you guys. I do go through and read all of the chat after the show is over and Mark is here today. Hey, Mark. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> there you go. He is my husband and he is going to be reading chat and ask, ask, bleh, <laughs> asking me any questions you guys happen to have. But if we don't get your question answered, make sure and leave me a comment down below in the comment section with your question and I will get it answered for you there. Thank you. All right, the pens, the colors we have, spearmint blue, denim blue, noir, black, arctic blue, ice blue, flamingo pink, and peach. And you go, wow, those are odd colors. But look at this. This is the reference. And I, if I don't have the link in the information below, I will put the link in the information below. I got this reference off of Unsplash and I really, really like this uh, particular photographer's style. I like that uh, silhouette and he does a lot of night sky silhouettes, either holding things or throwing things in the air. It's a lot of fun to see his work. So, but I don't have his name on the top of my head right now. I will put it in it put it in the more information box down below the video. So let's get started. I have taken a piece of 140 pound watercolor paper, just like this. And I just taped it to the, um, <laughs> it's actually a mat board that is in a plastic bag. And I just taped my watercolor paper with washi tape right to it. All right. So we're doing this in the portrait orientation, just like that. And I am going to go ahead, put a little bit of, ooh, I didn't grab chalk, pencil. Well, it doesn't really matter. I need my, my background on first anyway. <laughs> so let's get the background on. I'm really kind of frazzled right now, aren't I? <laughs> Katie, thank you so much for coming and sharing your support. I appreciate that. And hey, everybody who's here, thank you. Let's see. Wow. I'm not sure how long I've actually been on. Thank you for the chalk mark. For a chalk mark. 
You have these pens, more ideas to use them. Yes, these pens are so much fun. So looking at this right here, you want to make sure that you are getting that highlighted area in the center. I'm going to use the ice blue to start off with. It's sort of a gray. And knowing that my jar is going to come up to about up here, Oh, you cannot even see that gray. There, I'll tip this so you can see. I want to make sure that that lightest part is up here at the top where it's going to be coming through and out of the jar. And then there's some light areas that are going to get peach and flamingo pink down in here. But I want to save the area with this pen with the light color and look at that we've already got that light area of the sky going in I love these night sky type pictures they they just make me happy now I am using a watercolor brush excuse me a water water brush that has water in the handle. I have not met, I did not wet the paper first. And sometimes you can do that, but with a lot of these lighter colors, if you wet the paper first, the pen won't release the color onto the paper. With the darker colors, that doesn't seem to be so much of a problem. So now I'm just getting that pen wet and starting to wet a little bit of the area around. That's going to help the dark color go in. And look, it's almost completely dissolved it, but it made it so I can put, where did my next color go? There it is. I've got the spearmint blue. What you looking for, Mark? <laughs> All right. So now we've got this lighter spearminty blue, and now it's going to start. I need to zoom in. That's what I need to do. Get out of this mode. Make this a bigger screen for you so you can really see what I'm doing. There, that'll be better. So now the paper is wet and I'm taking this spearmint blue and you see how it's got this transition from that lightest color to sort of a mid-tone or middle blue. And I'm going to work that one out and around and a little bit to the inside. I'm just looking at this. We've got this light cloud and then you've got a little bit darker going around it. We've got the color that's going to be going into the jar. And by holding my, my reference here, I can get an idea where I'm going to be putting my colors is pretty much dead center on this page here. And as we come down, this is going to be inside of the, the jar and then in the arm, the hand that's holding the jar. And I'm starting to work my way out of that dry or onto the dry paper. So now, ba-boom, pen cap. <laughs> yeah, I, my, I have to hold this up for you to be able to see it. So I'm working at a bit of an angle. You don't have to work on an angle, you could do this totally flat. Now I'm getting that spearmint blue all colored in. This would make a beautiful card for many different things. All depends on the sentiment you put on the inside. Just getting this wet, working my way out. The paper does buckle a little bit, having it taped down onto a surface is nice. I want to not have a hard transition right there. 
We will dry this and put a little bit more color on. But we're going to get the whole thing covered with color first. So now I want to go in and start getting this orange cloud and a little tap of some of these colors up. And it's just a wiggle. Just wiggle the pen in some of those light colored spaces. There we go. We're getting that real pretty soft color in there now. Down in the jar is going to be much brighter. But for the moment, I just want to get my placeholders in. See? So that's just a placeholder. It's just... Oh, and if your pen tip gets kind of a little bit dirty... Where did my paper towel go? There it is. Just wipe it off. Just run it around in a circle on a paper towel and the pen tip is all nice and clean again. Do make sure and put your caps on your pens because they, um, they will dry and you'll have to do a little bit of finagling to get the ink flowing again. But it's not bad. All right, I'm going to get some of this paper wet out here. I'm going to put one of my next blue colors in. This is the Arctic blue. I'm going to actually take some of that in where it's going to be a little bit darker in the jar. And this is one of those colors that doesn't go as quickly onto wet paper. But look, we're starting to get some of those little definition areas working it in. I hope you guys are having fun. And if you want to do this, remember that there is a printable, it's in my shop, but it's a free download. And I do have some digital downloads that are available in my shop, a coloring book and a, some other things, shrink it project pack paper folding, but you don't have to buy those at, you know, <laughs> unless you want them. I have another drawing tutorial uh, sheet that's in my shop. That's a free, free one for my hummingbird class also. And that's a free video on YouTube and a free downloadable how to draw a hummingbird. All right. Now we're going to get that darker blue. And there, see, now we're going to start getting some of that night sky working in. This is the denim blue or an indigo blue. We will be putting black on the very outside edge. So we've got a little bit of the dark sort of inside. There we go. If you guys have any questions, go ahead and ask. Mark will ask me the questions. What are the pens called exactly? These pens are the Arteza Real Brush pens. They have an actual filament brush tip. So it's like a real paintbrush. And the handle is filled with a liquid ink dye that is like a watercolor. And it would really be helpful to me and my channel if you would share this video with your friends. If you have a chance, show them how easy this is. And if you only have the Crayola washable markers, you could do this with that also. I am going to be doing a couple more videos with this particular reference, showing how to do it with watercolor pencils 
and how to do it with acrylic. And my friend Cinnamon the Art Sherpa just did a lovely video on techniques, how to make starry skies and how to do, she's got some blending videos on how to blend paints, acrylics, to get these fun nighttime skies and such. So I will be looking at her video to get some tips and pointers on how to share my particular painting. And I am just working this around My pen doesn't like working on an angle, so I'm going to have to lay this down now. I think I can because I've got enough dark on here. You can see it. And let's get a little bit of water. Start working this. There we go. Oh, yeah. It's a lot easier to work on this when it's flat. I like being able to get these variations in the tone. And those soft, cloudy effects. Watercolor does it so nicely. It's going to be interesting to see if I can do it with the acrylic. I'm pretty sure I can. It's just going to probably take a little bit longer. A little bit longer. There we are. I am going to do, 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 grab a paper towel, wipe off the water brush tip, put the cap back on the indigo. Well, actually, no, I want to put a little bit more indigo down here. And here, this is where you can see what I mean. It doesn't, when the paper is really wet, the ink does not flow very well out of the pen. So you kind of have to let this dry and or move to another area of your painting and add a little bit more color. I'm adding some of those really dark flamingo pink spaces for that what's captured in the jar. Get that cloud in there. And I, you see, I'm just, I'm not being really super precise. I'm letting the pen tip sort of dance around. The paper is wet still. I am going to put a little more water on there. I want to put a couple little taps of this orangey color out there, outside where the jar is. We're going to soften it just a little bit. They don't need to be quite as bright. The pinks tend to be more staining than the uh, some of the other colors. So where you put them down is pretty much where they're going to be, but you can soften them. But I don't want to smush this all out. I want this to be sort of a special spot with a lot of different variation. All right, now we're gonna drop a little bit of black on here. We'll start up here at this corner. I just want to get some black started in so we can start defining the edges of our space. So if you guys are interested, I do have a coloring book out on Amazon. Many of my friends and some people I don't know have actually purchased it and have been reviewing it on Amazon. If you have already purchased my coloring book, I would really, really appreciate it if you would go in and leave a review honest review what you actually think of the coloring book. That would be really helpful.
And while that's almost, there we go. I just need to soften up that margin so that the color looks like it all belongs and that I didn't just color a hard edge. Soften that margin, let that black sort of blend in. I do have to remember to put the actual stars on before I put the silhouette. That's one of the things that I forgot when I did this one. <laughs> and I had to be really, really super careful where I put the stars. So this is what we're aiming towards, just to give you a little bit of an idea. Oh, I'm really liking this. Okay, we're going to let that sit for a second and just, that's the, the coloring book. It's Fun Floral Mandalas by me and it's on Amazon. There's a link in the information. Oh, and if you are interested in watercolor pencils, I have a video that's going to be a premiere on this coming Monday, how to do this rainbow gradient with watercolor pencils. It's an inside out rainbow. I started at yellow, went to the red, and then went to the purple and the blue. It's pretty fun. So if you're interested, that will be going up at 9.15 a.m. on Monday. And now I do need to dry this a little bit. So I'm hoping that it's not going to be too loud on the microphone. We'll sort of put the, put the board up in front of it. That way you can see this picture. Thank you, Madonna. I appreciate, I appreciate your endorsement of the coloring book. Oh, and if you're a patron, over on Patreon, there's something special coming to your mailbox. I have addressed all of my fun little packages. Well, they're envelopes, but I have a fun envelope going out to each one of my patrons over on Patreon for this month. And that's a little surprise. They didn't know it was coming. So if you're interested in possibly getting little surprises for me every once in a while, that's not even tied to the tears for support. Everybody got something. That would be a place to help me out. <laughs> All right. So yes, that is, oh my gosh, that is so pretty. You could stop right after putting the stars on. Um, I'm not going to stop. I'm going to put the jar on. But before we do that, we need to put the stars on. I have a ceramic tile. And I am going to be using the Arteza white gouache. Just a little bit. We'll soften it up. Sprinkle some stars on. I am just doing the... Excuse me. I am just wetting down a watercolor brush, snap brush, stroke brush. This isn't really watercolor. This is more of a soft body um, all-purpose brush. So just getting this nice and wet, but not too wet. If you get your gouache too runny, your stars will just absorb the color of the ink underneath. You can do this with white acrylic also. Let's see here. Woo, that was some, some flicking. It's, there we go. I want to get some stars here in the center. I'm, a, I'm holding this at an odd angle. I think I'm going to have to do the tappity tap. I was trying to not tap because if I tap it, it makes a bad, you know, banging noise, but 
I need to, whoa. I need to get some bigger stars. There, oh, there we go. Liking that. All right. Sometimes you do things multiple ways and you get multiple sizes, different sizes. So flicking got me much smaller stars and tapping got me those bigger stars. Let's see here. I have a little, well, that's just going to be a little uh, extra bit of space gas <laughs> where I just had to wipe off that drop of water. There we go. All right. So now I am going to dry this again really quick. We will put the chalk on the back side of the template. Now on this one, I did not pre-draw in. I just went straight in with the paintbrush. But I know that that can cause some people to feel a little uh, concerned. I don't want you to feel concerned about that too much. So we are going to use a traceable. There we go. Wow, I'm really enjoying that. <laughs> That's, thank you, thank you. I am having so much fun. So now, before I wipe that down just a little bit, I need to put some chalk on the back. This is just printed on standard printer paper. And if you don't have a printer, you could bring this up on your um, computer screen or tablet screen, lay a piece of paper and trace it. I am going to grab that piece of chalk that you handed me and I'm just rubbing this is standard just standard kids chalk that breaks so I'm just rubbing it on the areas where there is the black showing through and then don't blow your chalk dust find a garbage can and tap it into the garbage can. Chalk dust isn't a good thing to breathe. So now I'm kind of figuring out where my, where my hand is going to go. Let's see. I think that's good. I don't know. It needs to be a little higher. Want a little bit of that wrist to show. Uh, this paper is four and a half by, here, let me show you. This is the same size. It is four and a half inches across and six inches down. It is, I had a ruler. I was going to, I was going to, ah, there it is. In centimeters, that is, about 11 and a half centimeters wide by 15 and a half centimeters tall. So now I have that kind of lined up the way I'm going to go. And let's see, I don't want to draw with a, with a pen. That's a, a yeah, here, guess I'll just use my white pen. <laughs> you'll be able to see me draw. So I'm just drawing on. Yes, I can see the chalk. You might not be able to see the chalk on the screen. You're so amazing, isn't it? It says Tiger Stripes 55. And it's oh. so easy and calm and pleasant to listen to. And Eddie says, do you find the lighter colored Arteza brush pens dry out quickly? You know, I have not had a problem with my lighter uh, lighter colors drying out yet. I have been using them a lot, so I'm not sure. But I always cap as as soon as 
I can, I cap my pens so I don't leave them, I don't leave them open. Now, I didn't have to color over this whole thing because all I need is the outline to fill in with the black pen. And we're going to use just the black pen <laughs> to draw this on. And let's see. Let's see if we go with a slightly different angle. If that's going to make it easier for you to see me draw. Otherwise, my hand is going to be in the way. So all I'm going to do first is just set my pen down with the point to the outside and draw on my lines. By having the point to the outside, I can keep it up against the edge of my chalk without having it going out. And then I am going to rotate. This is where it, it ends up looking really cool because we're going to get those edges put in. We will take a water brush to this to so soften the edges, but we're only going to soften on the inside of the glass. So tip point goes towards your chalk line or your pencil line. Like that. So guys, does this angle work for you? What do you think of this, this camera angle? And now I'm just going to outline or inner line where that silhouette of the hand is. And it looks funny. This hand looks really funny. And it was so funny when my husband first saw it the first time. He thought that I had given the person six fingers. And because I had this little lump out here for the sleeve... But it was just the sleeve. And now this hand is farther down on the uh, paper. And it's going to look really weird. But that's okay. You know? I think that this person has gloves on. They're holding the jar. And now I'm just filling in the inside of that hand and the sleeve. Angle's perfect. Angle's good, they say. Oh, good, good. Glad to hear that. Now, if you can, when you're doing your, your painting and throwing your stars on, if you can avoid putting your stars low where the hand is going, that's a good thing because sometimes um, the stars will kind of come through. And if that bothers you, you can either use black acrylic paint or gouache to fill this in. See, I want that finger a little bit higher up. Sometimes when you trace things, they don't come across as well. And you, you sort of make things up as you go. The part of that is just doing art. Just do it and flow along with it. Remember that this is your painting when you do it. It's not your painting if you take what I did and claim it as yours. But if you do it as your own, it's your painting. 
This artwork, the original photograph, is from Unsplash, and it is a uh, free to use to create art with. Oh, something really cool that I just found out about Unsplash is that they just got the archives, the digital archives. They have the rights to share all the public domain digital archives from, uh, oh my goodness, so many, like 20 new locations. They've got the National Oceanogra Oceanographic um, archives of photographs. They've got the um, pretty much anything that's not on the um, Getty images. If it's public domain, Unsplash has it now. They've got NASA. They've got the um, McGill. I think it's the McGill in um, Canada. Yeah. So many cool things, places to get references. If you like anything that's, you know, turn of last century or the previous century. So now it looks really weird, but what it is, is I'm going to change the, uh, change the view back. Actually, I changed it on the wrong one. Boom. <laughs> there we go. This person is holding a jar of stuff. My jar has water in it. I can't tip it. But when you turn your hand like this, look at that. Your fingers, you get this little split here. You get, you get this little area where your little finger is. This is the thumb that's holding the front of that jar. And it's up here next to that finger. So see, about like that is how the hand is holding that jar. This finger is shorter than that finger. This finger is shorter than that finger. This one is actually shorter, but in theirs. But I say it's about like this, maybe stretched up just a little bit, curled in. There you go. You can use your own hand to go, oh yeah, that really is real. It does really work like that. I need to put the cap on my pen. Now I'm going to do the magic -y bit to get the, the shading of inside the glass because this is a silhouette, but it does have some shading. All I'm going to do is wet the black and the paper going in and let that black shading work its way in. Don't wet the outside of the glass. And then you'll maintain that sharp, sharp edge on the outside. So look at that. Now I am going to rotate this so that I can get this at a good angle to be able to draw right along that edge. And I'm not wetting along the fingers except right down in here and right down in here, kind of in that shadowed area, but not over the tops of the fingers. I, I want the tops of the fingers to be a little bit more um, defined. We are getting really close to being finished with this already. I hope you guys have been enjoying it and that you're going to share. And if you are a patron over on Patreon, you can actually share your images on the community tab. There's a community forum where people who are on there can share. If you're not and you want to share your images, you can do that on Facebook, on the Facebook page. See, look at, it's like magic. It's like those old uh, coloring books that we would get as kids that had the paint printed on the page and all you did was use a watercolor or water brush. There 
There we are. Can you get this image from where again? Okay. I got this one from unsplash.com. And I will put the link, the direct link to the image. All right. Let's see. I want this bit right here to be a little bit darker based on this image right here. See how up in this space, it's a little bit darker? Pen cap. <laughs> up here on the edges, it's a little bit darker right up here. So put a little bit more. It's a little bit darker on the outside edge. Put a little bit more. Just like that. You don't have to, it doesn't have to be perfect. Cool thing. Perfection is not required, especially with these silhouettes like this. So make sure that you are getting that, getting out and doing your creative stuff, sharing your creativity with those you love, you know, taking care of yourself, doing creative things really is a gift for those around you also. They get the gift of your artwork, but they also get the gift of your peaceful nature that comes out when you have fun. And I hope that you had fun doing this. There are lots of videos on my channel. I have a playlist that I will be linking up. I couldn't link it before the uh, live show, but I will be linking up playlists of more p playing with pens, playing with watercolor, and just playing, having fun. Thank you guys. Remember to hit the links and check out the information down below with all of the information on materials and places where you can help support my channel. I thank you so much. Remember to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. Go out and do something creative. Take care of yourself so you can take care of those around you. And I'll see you on Monday at the premiere for the Inside Out Rainbow Gradient with Watercolor Pencils. We'll see ya. Take care. Bye-bye.